Robot, Robot. You thought we was gonna leave you alone tonight. But we got a show for you tonight. We bringing on the brother Rod Haynes. We in the building to warm up the stage, give everybody time to get up in this joint, man. We warming up the stage. I'm the opening act for the uh for the brother Rod Haynes tonight. So get him in the building, man. We're setting it up right now for you. Oh, yeah, this is about to be good. This is about to be real good. Let me get that thumbnail for you. We in the building. Get him on. Tell him we live. That thumbnail. Oh, yeah, there we go. They're getting this set up. The rod hangs on Yaku part two, the revised version. Get him in here. Hey, share it and lock it on your Facebook right now. We're about to be bring Rod Haynes to the stage in a minute. Young Gilda in the building, man. I'm about to switch to this laptop. See what we got. The Rob, the brother Rod Haynes up in the, it's gonna bring it tonight. You don't want to miss this one. The tickets are sold out. The tickets are sold out for the night. It's a whole bunch of other people going live. I see the uh Master Teacher Taj Tariq Bay uh, going live, I think, on another person's channel. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, Rob, right get him in the building. It's about to be lit. I'm gonna switch to my laptop so I can get this way I can show my camera. I don't gotta hold a phone because I think I got the mics fixed now. Uh, now, let's do this. Let's switch to this computer thing. See, can I turn my screen on? Hey, if you see what's going on now. We got the momentum, bro. That's why we're putting out so many tapes back to back like this. We got the momentum. We got the momentum right now, baby. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We got the momentum. We up next. We the leaders of the rocket ship, baby. We're running the game right now. Right? So if you ain't checked out all those tapes we got coming out, we already put out 45 tapes uh, this month already uh, for two weeks. We uh, we running really fast here. Uh, let me get this chat pulled up. I'm gonna pull the chat up on my phone now, so I can see how y'all are uh, uh, testing the sound and all that for Rod Haynes. Come on, you know. Uh, let's see. Testing the sound. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. Oh yeah, baby. It's time to blow. This white black stuff. Oh yeah. I got that chat loaded up on. It. Hey Robot to everybody in the building. I see you, baby. I see you, baby. Oh yeah. 
Hey, how to how it sound? How to uh how the uh sound? The quality sound. Can y'all hear me good? Or is it chopping up? I want to be able to share my screen. Uh we got about 10 minutes that we're gonna bring the brother Rod Hangs on I'm trying to make sure all the uh one or the two. Can y'all hear me good in the chat? Somebody drop uh if I'm clear or not. Oh yeah, baby. It's about to go down. We told you. We on a mission. We on the court. We got a lot of haters. But we hitting them with that MJ fade, baby. We hitting them with that MJ fade, that unstoppable fade, that game winning fade, that buzzer beater shot fade, that Mike and Kobe use, right? Oh yeah, baby, we using it. They mad because they can't stop it. Can't stop that MJ fade, bro. Oh yeah, 23, baby. Keep that in mind. Oh yeah. What we got in this uh okay, it sounds nice. Say it sounds nice, sounds clear, sounds perfect. All right, yeah. So we're about to get started in a minute. I'm gonna uh oh yeah. So we clear. Excuse all the stuff in the background because this my office is over packed now since we got more furniture, so we gotta make more space. So uh yeah, but we we live, we lit, bro. We live, we lit. Get them on in. Let me let me share it on a couple. Uh, let me share it on Facebook real quick. We didn't have time to set up the uh, to like uh, to alert everybody before because we got uh, we really was a spur of the moment thing. We had to get a whole bunch of uh, documents. Load into a certain file, so when the brother come on, he can go through the, uh, his receipts and documents, right? Everybody's uh, everybody's watching us. Uh, they watching what we are doing. They watching what we are gonna do next. They want to hear what we are gonna say, right? And uh, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come because uh, we just getting started. We probably at about three percent right now. We still got about 97% to go on this information tip. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole nother level we could go to. But we got it, we're making everything clear now. Because it's time, 6,000 years is up that Elijah Muhammad spoke about. 6,000 years is up now. It really was up in the year 2000. But we gave him a couple extra years. Then we gave him an extra warning in, in 2012. And uh, now nah, that's a wrap. It's over. Ain't no more that. Ain't no more uh, time. It's a wrap. That's why you see all the things that's happening right now. And you're going to see more. Don't be surprised. We said it here first. You're going to see more. Let me uh, tell the brother Raw Haynes that we on live real quick. We're going to bring him on, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. If you want to uh, send the brother uh, Rod Haynes some donations, we're going to post the uh, brother Cash App in the link, man. He don't do it. For, he said he don't do it for money. But if you want to show him some love, we already getting that set up for you, man. Yeah, and if you want to show your brother some love, so your brother some love. We're gonna put our cash app in the link as well. Man. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button if you're just coming in, man. Hit that like right now. If you're just coming in, hit that like right now, man. Hit that like right now, bro. If you haven't checked out the music, the, the uh the mixtape we got out, y'all got flow. Go check that mixtape out, man, in the playlist, bro. Uh, you know, when, when you're chilling in your car, you want to bump some, 
Ouais, bon, t'es Young Got Flow, man. Young Got Flow Part 2 coming, bro. Young Got Flow Part 2 coming out. All right, so, so the Royal Raw Hands will be on in a couple minutes. But like I say, uh, the strategy that we using, the strategy that we using right now is we got the momentum. The ball is in our court as a people. The ball is in our court now. It's time for us to put some points on the board now for the home team. It's time for us to come back. To so come back, we was, we was down by 20. But it's time for us to start shooting our jumper, man. You got to shoot the jumper. I told him uh, on that song, on Baba, I got this, that I'm on point with this jumper. I'm working them like Eddie House. A lot of people don't even know who Eddie House is. So you just pull up uh, Eddie House, go 61 points in the game, all jumpers. 61 points in the game, all jumpers. I'm telling you, man, we're on point with that jumper like Eddie House. We're hitting them every day, two or three times a day. We're keeping them busy, like Bob said, keep them busy. So, uh, yeah, so we got the raw brother, Raw Haynes, finna get it. Come on. We warming up the stage for this brother. Right, he got uh, he got classes all over the internet, all over uh, Instagram, right? And the ancestors are looking out for us. They they uh, they 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 even blowing us up a little bit. There's a couple of brothers on uh, TikTok and all that that's mopping our shit right now. So we we appreciate those brothers. We need more people to, to promote it, spread the word, because the more information that we can get out the more minds that we can get on a certain level the easier the job is gonna be to make the jump we only here to get certain groups of people we, we came in the shams and we landed here and we come in here to teach a certain group of people and we take we do this every time this is the first time we did doing this we do this every time we come in here we send four runners right before Nubaru come. We, we see who all my the 24 elders come in. They see uh we send 12 first the first 30 minutes and then 12 the second 30 minutes. And so we, I'm part of that second 12. The first 12 was with Baba. And you, you know we got a picture, I got a picture that shows you that uh the first 12 that was with Baba. All right. Well, so we here now to give you the final push that you need. Ain't no more excuses. Ain't no more excuses on who you who you are, what you are, what your job is, right? Like I say, we Sabians, we part of the royal, royal bloodline. That's why they pick people uh, with the last names, like I told you. We got the last name taped on. People that putting their last names in the uh, chat, that's cool because I'm, I'm writing all those names down. So we get more and more last names coming in. So the bad with me on the last name tape, we're going to put it out. It's going to be put out and you're going to get your last name going to get called out. And we're going to tell you uh, the connections between all your last names. Who you connect with. We already walked across the land. Showed you the facial features in, in America. We're going to next. We're going to walk you across to uh, Africa. And we're gonna walk you through Russia and the original people of Germany, which was the Bantu people. The Bantu people. That's King George's mother's, uh, King George the Third mother's side. They were the Bantu people, right? So we just give it a couple of minutes. We got about, uh, yeah, buddy. All right, so yeah, he getting set up right now. Rod Haynes, he finna get it. Come on, brother. Hey, shout out to brother uh, Aaron. For the donation, brother. Like I say, we ain't here. I'm not here to be your God. I'm only here to. I'm only here as a, a teacher. To teach, I teach you. You go on, and then I go to my other spot and teach the next class. I'm only here to give you what information. You take it. You run with it. You do what you got to do with it. Wake up, be your own God. Think for yourself. 
See, if Allah Muhammad said, do for yourself, I'm telling you to think for yourself. <laughs> think for yourself, you know what I mean? Right? Don't let nobody else think for you. But if, if people come and they got good ideas, that I, them ideas can generate real because that's like digging in the gold mine. That's a gold mine. People got gold mines. They got great ideas. They can be worth a lot of money, or a lot of gold. That's what we call real money, right? So the brother Rod ain't say he getting set up. Everybody ready? Come on. So we just getting people time to come in. I shared it. Let me share it on this right here too. Oh yeah, baby. We live in the building. We live in the red. We live at you. We'll take, hey, it's a, it's a tape that we did earlier. A lot of people ain't checked it out yet. It's called, uh, Can You Have More Than One Master? A Master Teacher. Right? So we're going to be seeing that tape pop up tomorrow or probably on tonight at about 12 o'clock. About 10 or 11 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Maybe 11 o'clock when it drops. Uh, all right, here goes Brother Roy Haynes. All right, now coming to the stage, the brother Rod Haynes, ladies and gentlemen. We live, we lit, baby. Oh, yeah. Salute, young elder. Oh, hey, Rod, right bye, brother. We, hey, we live. We already, <coughs> how many people we got in this joint? We already rolling. Baby. We got 180 people so far. All right, well, let's do a little recap. So the last uh, the last part of this, we went over the Yakub story as taught by Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I see you posted uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad tells by Yakub. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, now remember, during the, during the grafting process, somebody had to oversee the process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, in the literature, Elijah speaks about the reversal. So now this is what we're going into now because it's, it's no secret there's a genetic component going on globally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why do we say that? If you can't use the divide and conquer of race if there's not a genetic component to it. Mm -hmm. Also, the blood of the individual, it gives them the rights. Mm -hmm. That means your hereditary, your heredity, your, the line of descent or descent in your ancestry is how you get your rulership right, through the blood right. Mm -hmm. Now earth, the uh, wealth, which we call the right to the money right. Mm -hmm. So you see in um, the Stella of um, Sumer, all of the guys got a bag in their hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do we say in modern terms? What are we trying to get? The okay. bag, right? Yeah. Okay, so they all got the bag. Yeah, I agree. Right, but they all care. Most of them is carrying the bag in the right hand. What's wrong with that? They carry the bag in the right hand. I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I can think, I can I can make a couple guesses, but you know, I don't really know. Okay, so the left brain control the right hand, right? Yeah. And the left brain is linear logic, right? Mm-hmm. Linear logic is a masculine or feminine. Do you know which one it is? Uh no. Go ahead. It's masculine. All right, go ahead. Linear logic is masculine left brain function. Okay. Right brain function is abstract, artistic okay. expression, okay. arts and entertainment. Go ahead. This is going to come back later on toward the end of the discussion. Mm -hmm. When we get over here from tracking what we call um, Yakub's agencies, agents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right <clears throat> now, we went over the eugenics process of um, Enki mm -hmm. in order to reverse the works that um, Enlil tried to have done behind the arrest of the Anunnaki back. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the question is, is it Inky the bad guy or is Enlil the bad guy? You, you asking me that? That's the general question. Okay. To me, uh, it depends on who perspective you're looking from. But to me, Enlil was a bad guy because he wanted to take uh, – uh, make the humans worship him, and then he didn't want them to know what he knew. But but Inky was sneaking around, telling them, and uh, you know, protecting the people, uh, a certain group of people, his people. Uh, so I think to me, uh, Inky, I mean, Enlil was the bad guy with his jealous attitude. He was the jealous. That's the bad. So we know Enlil mean Lord of the Air, mm -hmm. but it also means Lord of the Booming Voice. Mm -hmm. So in the book, this is how you know he's talking about Enlil. Mm -hmm. It say, and his voice was like many waters. Mm -hmm. Right? That's that low growling rumble of thunder. Mm -hmm. Right? Because this is the symbol of the sky god. Mm -hmm. The thunder and the lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. The sound and the light. Mm -hmm. So what organ of sense do we perceive sound? The ears. What organ of sense do we perceive light? The eyes. Okay, now watch this. It say uh, you the uh, knowing comes by hearing, mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. Ain't mm -hmm. that what it say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what the fuck do that shit mean? Yeah, right. Go ahead. Right. Then they say. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and that word was God. What mm -hmm. the fuck is they talking about, young elder? Yeah, hey, and the word was God. Yeah, I, I can give you my uh, perspective on it. Uh, but Come on with it, man. We all open here. We just have the discussion. But I'm going to show you something in a minute. But tell yeah, me. Yeah. The word, man, in the beginning was the word. The word, to me... Is uh like it's, it's a, it was just a regular it was a sound it was a sound and that sound is is on um, um that's the sound that was from the beginning that's the sound that was it created everything like all the octaves because we all made of sound everything here is a sound frequency and that sound frequency speeds up to create light that's that speeds uh, that light speeds up to create thought right so. Uh, if we all sound and the, the, the universal sound is on and it's got 144 different octaves uh, in that one frequency, then we all just a frequency of sound. It's so another it's, polarity to the arm. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of what it is? No, go ahead. It was, it was a negative and a positive. Go ahead. I don't know. Yeah, because the other polarity is called the aim. Okay. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. Right. So remember. Uh, Farrakhan said to me, a man, March, when you hear the A tone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From the one God bringing you to divine light. So now, if the light is perceived from the eyes, what do the books say about the eyes? It said, when these, when the, when you, the whole, they said, when these two eyes become one, mm -hmm. the whole body is filled with light. Ain't that what it say? Mm -hmm. How is this possible? Because everything is in the mind. Well, the fact that all, uh, the two eyes becoming one is a metaphor for making open in the third eye. Yeah, we yeah, see yeah. Behind the physical perception. Yeah. Right? So we're going to go into some receipts in a few minutes, and we're going to use the receipts to guide the, uh, the conversation. Yeah. Okay, I got you. See, they say I don't bring receipts when I be talking about shit. So I figured, well, we talking about a very touchy subject between um, racial right. groups and that a lot of people get offended. So this might be a good time to carry on with receipts to show the people exactly what the fuck I'm talking about and tying all of this shit together. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So. um you ever heard of a book called As a Man Thinking by James Allen? As a Man Thinking. No, no. Right. So in the Bible, it's based on a verse in the Bible that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, right, so mm -hmm. shall he be. Mm -hmm. 
What the fuck they mean, think in your heart? I thought we thought with the brain. Exactly. Exactly. Uh-huh. Right? Now, remember, they say the thought was the cause of it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If the thought was the cause of it all, then what the fuck was the word? Exactly. The, if the word was God and thought was the cause of it all, then the word that became God had to become false. That's right. That's right. So we we talking Jehuti here. We talking yeah. um, Quetzalcoatl, the great Thunderbird. Yeah. Right. So the thought, when we go back into the history, we see that thought in words was created with the first alphabet, and the first author of the first alphabet was Tahuti. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as the author of the first alphabet, we know in alchemy that in order to create a new alphabet, that each letter has to be charged to a color, a number, and a sound frequency. And the reason this is, is because when you put the letters together to form a word, you infuse in the word with the power as if you're using a sigil because the words themselves carry density and weight with them, right? So you get to understand in the word different when you look at its source. So when they say in the beginning was the word, in the beginning was the thought, and the thought manifests as the word through false, to hooty. And so when we get to, um, to um, Imhotep and Zoser, we get to what we call the masters of the word. They the masters of the word. How do you become the master of the word? Because you have to be a master capable of calling forth the thought. And the thought being the cause of it all, you, you dialing back to what you call first spark of creation. The modern scientists call it the big bang, but we call it the collapse. Right, because we know that <clears throat> torsion fields expand and contract, and in the center of every torsion field is something called a black hole. Well, we torsion fields too. In the black hole, if it consumes the heart chakra, keeps you trapped in the cycle of 3D subjugation. I'm digging that uh, headpiece too, uh, by the way, representing the HTM. <laughs> oh, oh, here piece right here yes sir oh yeah it's, i made it myself man it's uh this right here is uh called a drop and juice joint the drop yeah juice. i got several uh i got the white and the black one and yeah. uh I'm gonna be making i, I want one like the one you got on you, do you make them for people yeah or you just yeah. make them for yourself yeah i'm gonna start making them i'm gonna put them, i'm gonna put them, have a website with them on them yeah i want one like the one you're wearing yeah it'll take me I about 10 minutes to make it yeah, I, every time I look at the at the crown on there, I be seeing Pop's face smiling at me. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I and I can see your and I can see your third eye on on your, a triangle right where your third eye is. See that I can see that it's open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the opening of the third eye is the myth of the Cyclops. Mm-hmm. The Cyclops is the giant that can see with the one eye, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And in your light body, you would be amazed at how tall you are. You 50 feet tall in your whole light body. All right, go ahead. Now, you got to crunch that 50 feet of light into this little six foot two or seven foot frame. Mm -hmm. Some people, that little five foot frame. That's why the little people are so powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They, if they learn how to harness, they, uh, bio energy, bioluminescence, right? The internal light within, mm-hmm. they become more powerful than the big people because mm-hmm. they more condensed light body in a smaller frame. Mm-hmm. It's like the magnifying glass in the sunlight on the paper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they burn some shit up, mm-hmm. right? So, <clears throat> you ready to get into these receipts? Because we oh, yeah, might it's, it's it, man. Hey, if you're just not coming into the building, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, man. Hit the bell. If you don't receive a notification from us every day, 
right? Check back with us, man, because we dropping something every day, bro. But to get into it right here, man. Hey, if you want to show us some love, we dropped it, we dropped all the cash apps in the links, man. So we're about to get into it. Let me share the screen. I, I got the folder already set up. I got everything in the folder you need, brother. So um, right. Um did you find out how to play the video links on here? Man, I, I still haven't figured out how to play. Uh, they showed a video on how to do it. I went on there, try to do it, but I, I couldn't really tell without nobody listening to it. Did it play, okay. man? So I, I, I'm gonna figure it out, though. I'm gonna figure it out. But I do got all your pictures that you sent me into the uh, text message. So, so it, it, yeah, the pictures is good enough to get the message across. Okay. <clears throat> the links, the links I want, we're going to uh, pull each one of the links up and just look at the title of the video since we can't get the sound through. Okay. All right. I want them, when I get to that topic, I want them to know what I'm talking about. All right. All right. All right. Hold up. So that first tape, let's go on YouTube real quick. That first tape was uh, the Nubian chick talking. No, the ones I sent you before that. All oh, the ones all the, 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 a couple days ago? Yeah. All right. Hold on. Let me, I'm going to find out for you then. Hold up. Oh, yeah, because I got, I got them in my, uh, my like playlist. Hold up. Let's see if it load up, baby. Hey, if you're in the building, we got 316 people up in this joint. Everybody hit that like right now, man. We about to go in. Oh, yeah. yeah. You tuned in with the young girl and the brother Rod Haynes. Okay, let me get right here. It's going to be boom. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> we watching you navigate your page to get to these videos. So if they want to watch the video, they can navigate through your page to get to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's gonna be hard because I don't got the lights unlocked, but I, I, I might. I, I can unlock the lights, or I can just set up a playlist for it and then put them in there. And then, I'm, then I'm gonna have the links in the bottom of this uh, class. I'm gonna have the links in the bottom of this class because you already sent me most of the links, right? So I'm gonna. Oh man, they guys to be kidding. Hey guys, welcome to Relatable. Happy Tuesday. Can you hit it? Can you hear yeah. it? It might, it might work. You hear it? I mean, yeah. you, you hearing that video? Yeah. Oh yeah, so it might have worked then. Oh, <coughs> sucky, sucky. Sucky, sucky now. All right, let me go to this first video real quick. Boom, boom. It's going to be right up in here. Terrence G. Williams. The hey, fight was fought back because I had watched it. Why you looking that up? You familiar with secret relations between blacks and Jews printed by the Nation of Islam, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I was going yeah, I'm, through... I'm, yeah, so... Go ahead, go ahead. When I was going through those books, I kept noticing that some of the places they saying that the Jews was doing things, there wasn't no pale people there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these Jews had to have complexion. Now remember, we went over the word Jew, right? And we talked about the satanic Jews, the uh, tutors, who came in as conquistadors in search of a new homeland. And their goal was is to usurp us. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, this video right here uh, you're pulling up is called... Um, oh, man. You just passed. Come on, they, they... No, it was on, it was on there, but something happened, man. It's... Hold up, we're gonna get it back on now. All right. Here we go, right here. It's doing some funky stuff, man. I'm on the video, but all right, let's go back. Yeah, why are white, why are so called white people called Caucasians? 
This program is presented by University of California Television. So you can hear like what you learn. Yep. Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, to keep hell up yeah. with the latest UCT yeah, working, man. <clears throat> so this is identifying professor of history here at Cal and a member of the Jefferson you want me to pause it? lecture. Yeah, pause it for a sec. So he going over her credentials and her qualifications to address this historical description she about to give. <clears throat> I want to watch the first couple of minutes of her introduction, but we're not going to watch the whole video. Painter has helped. Her addition is not on. I think so. They can they can see you and say why white people are called Caucasian, and yeah. they can go to the actual video, watch the whole thing. But listen to our introduction. Really lovely. It's wonderful to be back in the Bay Area. I haven't been here since last year. My father, who's now 94, oh, yeah. who spent his career in Lewis Hall as the chief technician of chemistry, last year came uh, to New Jersey. So we haven't been coming back as often as we did before. Uh, I want to thank the uh, Jefferson Lecture Committee for bringing me here from Newark and for giving me the chance to talk to you and see old friends and some new friends. So this afternoon, my talk has three sections. One is an autobiographical section, fairly short. I want to tell you something about my process. Uh, the second part is the actual body of the lecture with the illustrations which I made especially for you. And then the last section is very brief. It has just one image which the Georgian uh, National Museum very kindly let me use without making me pay for permission. <clears throat> so the question of why are white people called Caucasian lies at the foundation oh, of my, 19, my 2010 book, The History of White People. People ask me, why did you write that book? I said, I wanted to understand why white people are called Caucasian. I started working during the Chechnyan wars of the uh, late 20th century. And I thought, why are white people called, why are American white people called Chechens? And so the book came out of that. So um, the book took many hundreds of pages. It's a very visual book because I wrote it while I was in art school, uh, but it's fundamentally a history book rooted in an archive of words. Its research came out of the Princeton University Library and I actually dedicated the book to the Princeton University Library. In the book, Jan Friedrich Blumenbach 1752 to 1840, uh, who plays a central role in the question I'm asking, uh, also has nearly an entire chapter. But his role in my presentation to you this evening, uh, he is really somewhat smaller. And that has to do with the process, my process of putting together this talk. So okay, as right there. told you, I spent five Okay, so now you see what she's telling us what the book is about and the uh, motive for her writing it is she wanted to know why white people was called ca Caucasian and some so-called white people in America is called Chechen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So um, can you open another tab and pull up... Uh, Caucus Mountain, so we can show them where it's at. Oh, I already got that. See, look, uh, what I did is I watched all the videos you sent me, right? And I got uh, pictures in relevant to what I thought you was going to talk about. So I got pictures of Caucus Mountain already up in here for you. Like okay. The, uh, so it's a lot of pictures in here that's relevant to what uh, those those four videos you gave me on that talk, right? Okay. So I got now, Caucus Mountain right here. Once now, once we see where this is, it's going to give us a visual orientation of um, what part of Europe we talking about when we talk about the Caucasus. i to go up a little bit more, baby. All right, there we go. Can you see that? Is that big enough? 
Okay, yep. Now you see where it say Turkey at, right? Mm -hmm. So Ahead now we're talking invasion from the Byzantine kings from Turkey. Mm -hmm. You see the where it say Russia at? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, if you look down to the right, it's our 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 Beijing or something down there. Yeah, I can't tell you what it is. It's right. Big. Then you see where it say Georgia, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, and then the, the actual thing say Greater Caucasus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the other side, on the um, Turkey side, it say Lesser Caucasus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, oh. <clears throat> so now we're talking about this is where they was hiding their genetic fuck ups, Island of Doctor Moreau human hybrids here. Mm. Right now, they was designing them to be functional to work in the mind, but it didn't work. Mm, I know what you're going ahead. Which created birth defects. Now, keep this in mind. Um, I need you to go to African presence in early Europe cover by Ivan Van Sertum. Oh, yeah. We got you. I sent you the picture. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Then you, so it was in that folder, right? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. But you want me to look it up online? All right. So let me go down and, and look through it. Oh, yeah. It might make it faster like this. Tell me when to stop. Right there. Pass right there. Right there? Keep going. We'll go back right there. Oh, yeah. Enlarge that so the people can see the book I'm referencing. This is the book I'm referencing. And here, there is a chapter that deals with Albionism and the Grimaldi uh, Africans that migrated into the French Alps and into Europe from um, going around what's called the Mediterranean Sea. Right, um, so it's this is the book that's going to explain the uh process of the Grimaldi, um, being those who were devoid of pigment, they uh they were they natural occurrences. Albionism is natural in more species than humans, mm. right? It's, a, it's just a side effect of the human species because we have what we call a genetic coding system, right? So if you pull up the uh, genetic dominance chart I uh, sent you earlier. I hope. I know I got it in here. Mm -hmm. You got the book, it's got to be in there. Right there, right there. Right, go back, go back. Hey, close that door, close that door for me. My, my boy, Hakeem, want to be up in here doing the show with me. So he, he that's why he called him. I right, say, so say right here? You, you just turned from me. Okay, all right, go back. Boom. Right there. Let me blow it up for you. That's probably like big as I can get with that. Can you see that? It's, it's still kind of blurry, though. Yeah, you, you can't really see it, but you get this you get the uh the description of the dominant trait and the recessive trait and the general human trait that they refer to as dominant and recessive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah, wavy hair. Okay, uh, yeah, this was it's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this. This picture right here shows the difference in the natural occurrences of expression between genes. I think I sent you one that actually got the genes on it to show what I'm talking about. All right, let me do it. I have to go back. All right, hold on. Boom. I think you 
I think he was going the right way the first time. Going his other way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get him in the building. Tell him we live, baby. Hit that like button. All these is uh, different things we're going to go over. We're going to go over them in a minute, one at a time. Go back the other way for a minute. I think I've seen it. Um, right there. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Oh, this is talking about the mixing of the races right here. <clears throat> so it's talking about um, the influence of those who have what we call mixed blood. Mm -hmm. All right. So <clears throat> if you scroll, scroll where you can see the top of the uh, the picture, what it say at the top. See what it say. So genetically, remember the one drop of blood doctrine we was talking about. Remember that? Yeah. Elder? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm okay. Listening. So right here it's saying biracial white and black adults have much closer ties to black relatives. This is genetically speaking. Okay. Right? So it's talking in terms of genetic, but you notice it's not just black and white in the chart. Yeah, you got Asian. Right. Because all of the royal families, the 12 daughters of Isis, make up the 13 royal families of the earth. Mm -hmm. All of them had to get some blood to clean up the genetic defect. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right? So they all came and they all gave blood, but the grassroots not naturally having an affinity for each other. J.A. Rogers, Superman the Man. Uh -huh. Pull that cover up. You got it in, his, uh, in that photo you sent me? Yeah, it, you, you can already pass it a couple times. All right, going this way? I believe so. Man, you got some good books up in this joint. Some old African books. No, Jay, Jay Rogers got to be the other way because those are the last photos I sent you. The other ones was earlier. Oh, okay, all right, let's go back. There you go. Yeah, baby. Right there? From Superman and Man is next book. See that? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's so cool. in this book, Superman and Man, Jay Rogers get references good. to the guy who is the senator. Uh-huh. And he's working as an orderly on the train, and he's telling him how... So the senators say that um, so-called Black people smell bad to white people, right? Uh -huh, I go ahead. So the uh, the orderly on the train is telling him of actual cases where uh, people in Africa got physically ill at the smell of a Caucasian. What? Right? So now we're talking about carbon-based versus sulfur-based. The goal is override the sulfur with one drop of blood. When you go back to the Sumerian tablets, and even in the um, in the Bible where it's talking about the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they was fair. They okay. talking about, <clears throat> they sent them down here for the genetic cleanup. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You're going somewhere, go ahead. So this is the Anunnaki race that came down because the Anunnaki fucked up the, the equilibrium of the earth. Mm -hmm. They created a species of human that would die before they was ever allowed the opportunity to ascend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, what, uh, what I, uh, Elijah called him, Yaku's grafted devil, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So he said the only way is that the only remedy is to undo what um, Yaku done by breeding the lighter back to the darker. And then you get something that they call in modern times Brazilianization. Okay, go ahead. All right. Now, I sent you a page where they talk about it got Brazilianization highlighted so people don't think I just made that word up. 
I think it's on one of these uh, covers. Keep going, keep going. We we gonna because we finna come to all of these in a minute. Okay. You saw you was up in them. You was up in them. They got to be bigger because I can't see which is which. Oh, he's right. You right. Oh. Okay, this is the drop of the blood, doctor, since we got it up. The okay, one okay. drop of blood rule is a legal principle of racial classification that was prominent in the 20th century United States. It asserted that any person with even one ancestor of Black ancestry, one drop of Black uh -huh. blood is considered uh -huh. Black, Negro, a colored in historical terms. It is an example of hypo descent, the automatic assignment of children of a mixed union between different socioeconomic and ethnic groups to the group of the lower status, regardless of proportion of ancestry in different groups. The concept became codified in the law of some US states in the early 20th century. It was associated with the principle of, look at the term, invisible blackness that <laughs> developed after the long history of racial interaction in the South, which had included the hardening of slavery as a racial caste system and later segregation. Now let's go to Jay Rogers, Sex and Race. They need to see this book because it's important. I got you, bro. I got to get this book. I ain't got that book. I got to get that one. Oh, uh, yeah. I got to get that Jay Rogers book. So what the hell you talking about? Hey, go right there. Mm, that's, yep, there you go, right there. Uh, Blow it up so they can see what the cover say. It says sex and race, Negro Caucasian mixing in all ages and all lands. Ain't that what it say? Yeah. So yeah. we know that based on African presence in early Asia by Ivan Van Sertima, we was already there. Yeah. Yeah. We also know from the African presence in early America that we was already here. Okay. Okay. We also know that everywhere where we are, a group of Caucasians came and was settled there by conquistadors. Okay. Okay. We know who brought the service because it tells us in the history books that when the settlers came with them. Yeah. The Don't Moors. it tell us that? Yeah, the Moors. The Moors brought them. Right. Go ahead. Right. But they're not telling you that the Britain that they're talking about is a black or more. Yeah. Right. But he's classified in law as a white man. It's a free white person in law. It's a legal status. Don't yeah. got nothing to do with skin complexion. Yeah, I got you. I got you on that. Right. Now, let's go back to the YouTube video. Remember the white lady I sent you? All right. Yeah. Uh, let me get it loaded up. I got you. All right. Let me get this closed. Now, the reason why I sent you her is because now we're getting into what we call hey, white lady went the hard legal... The white lady. The legal classification and the foundation for creating a white race. The white race didn't originally have pale people in it. It wasn't until they instituted into the laws of the corporation and everybody became classified as a straw man that they use it to separate the uh, dark from the light. Right? Was it born of white nations? That's what it was, right? Uh, yeah, I know what it was. Hold on. This, this, I think you're talking about this one right here. Oh, yeah, baby. If you tune in right now, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you want to show your brother Wild Hang some love, we posted the cash app at a link every five minutes, family. <clears throat> I hold up. This program hold up. is this by Universal. Hold on, I'm gonna get you right to it. I'm gonna get you right to it. All right, back. 
One more. Now this like this. Now I ain't lie to you, man. I, I watch the both whole uh, the whole videos of both of them. But that white lady, she she sound made more sense to me. The other lady was just she was talking sense too. But you know, the white lady just had more like she was just. I was like, damn, then being that she white, she, she's talking that. from. Okay, so the sister was showing hers was more founded on the photograph she was showing. If you pay attention to the photograph she was showing, she was showing nappy head, pale skin people. Mm -hmm. And they were classified as Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the nappy head, pale skin people in the Bible are called Canaanites. Yeah, that's right. The sons of Canaan. Them right. Grimaldis that they speak of in African presence in early Asia. Right? Okay. In the Bible, they call them clean lepers. I got pictures yeah. of two for you too. Yeah, they call them clean lepers. There is no rising in the skin. There is no sores. They clean, right? So that's what they refer to in the Bible. The sons of Canaan, the Canaanites, those who curse with Albionism. Albionism is a form of leprosy in, a, in the ancient texts. Mm -hmm. because they leprosy causes the skin to lose color, but it also causes the limbs. It's a parasite just eating on the inside of your limbs. It's like a bacteria, right? But they don't find that it's two video. years later. So like, uh, so like, like you say, like the Canaanites and the Fugalor is a different species. But the count, but the figure laws did mix with some of those Canaanites, uh, don't you? Don't you say that? Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Look, all of these groups mix with the genetic experiment. The Flugerides came here um, with assistance from the Alderburn constellation in or because they was already pale skin, but they had the ability to ascend to, to mastery. Uh -huh. But the genetic experiment didn't. Here she go. See if we can get some volume on that. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get you the volume on it right here, baby. Number two, right any claim that okay, this sorry, is about called white people. Right here. Um, any claim. Hey, tell me if it's too loud. No, it's good. All right. Perfect. So I did have it fixed. I just couldn't white get nobody to hear. People did not exist before 1681. Again, white people did not exist on planet Earth oh, yes. until 1681. Number Stop two, that. any claim that this group called white people... Okay, now, she just gave us a specific date that the creation of the so-called white people on Earth came into existence but watch what she tell us brings them into existence. We're going to watch about a minute and a half, two minutes of this. Um, any claim that that group is rooted in biology or derived um, from genes or biology oh, or is innate or is from nature is a lie. Third and final point. As a matter of foundational law, actually, let me say it this way. White supremacy has been embedded in the United States of America from its founding as a matter of law. Now, I don't expect you to buy all that, to get all that, to believe all that, at least not now. But my job is to share with you the um, legal history that proves each of those three claims that I begin with. So okay, let's go. You stop it there. Okay, so that's called birth of a white nation, mm -hmm. right? So the people can watch the rest of it on their own, but they it's a good that's a video they need to watch because now she's talking about the legal classification of something called white people, mm -hmm. right? So let's Google the term "free white person" and see what they tell us. Oh yeah, yeah I got you. Hey, so she said, uh, so, man, she just she talking about the term, right? When she says 16, they give you that number. She's talking about the term and not the actual. Uh, no, there were no people. people 
called white people. Yeah, you're right. That's right. Nowhere on earth before that that year. It's not in the history books unless they've been what you call edited. This is how they trick us into divide and conquer right here. We unraveling the trickery because we're gonna <laughs> go to <coughs> we're gonna go to who be handed in a minute. All right, so look at here is a good one. Can you see that? I can't see it. Oh shit, hold on. Am I seeing my screen? Oh look. So you can't see my screen? I can see the screen, but it's too little to read. Oh shit, hold up. Okay, uh how do I make that big? There we go. I don't think this um free white person though. Hold up. You say you say put it up in Black Law Dictionary. What you say? If you can get it up from the Black Law Dictionary, it'll tell you even better. What does it mean to be a free white person? Which immigration acts allows any free white person to of good character who has been living in the unlimited the United States for two years or longer to apply to citizenship. All uh, right, that's how they give it to me right there on that. Uh, Do you see where it said in good standing? Yeah, a good character, good standing. Good, standing. Yeah. That's saying they got to be a noble. Oh, you know, yeah. it, you not, you not a You're not of good character unless you're a noble. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, I'm with you. Noble is a title of nobility prohibited by the Constitution, so they can't say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So instead, they say good character. That's mm -hmm. the same as saying mm -hmm. noble. Mm -hmm. Noble character or noble quality. Mm -hmm. Right? So at that noble meaning uh, of or pertaining to the nobility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's about the character of the individual. So it's just telling you right there that if you're part of the nobility, you are a free white person in law. But it's it's confusing to the lay person that don't know what they're saying. But when you look up the word noble, it's gonna say of good character, mm -hmm. of good quality of character, right? Or of mm -hmm. the nobility or the gentry, mm -hmm. right? Viceors are called gents. That's because they the royal family from over here. That them big that's big mama house. Mm -hmm. And so they call gents. They got a different function from the pea stone, which is the pussy stone, which is mama's pearl, which is mama's girl, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is an entirely different function from the blue house, growth and development. Yeah. Love, life, loyalty, the three prongs on the pitchfork. Yeah. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Six points of the star. This dad's house, pop's house. Right? Yeah. So now when we go back and we got to understand who Putin is and the Russian connection to overthrowing the Anunnaki on Earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I sent you a picture, I think it's from Pops, but it got uh, the early people of Europe. You passed it several it. times. All right, let's, let's get it, let's That's get it, it right there. Oh yeah, we right on it. Pulled it right up on the, got on. All right. See where it say the first Europeans. You see the bald head dude up on the right? Yeah, right here. The, the zoo right yeah, here. That's the Russian stock before the admixture to use their blood, the czars. Uh -huh. This is where the family of czars, royal family of Russia came from. Okay. Right? Now, look at, where, look at the geography of each one of these ethnic groups. And look at the facial characteristics, and then you understand why when they add mixture of blood, it comes in, you've got all of these different looks. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, can I ask you a question right here? Yeah. Right, so, the, so uh, the Java man, the Java man, uh, with the black, like they need look like Neanderthal type, a uh, hairy type, but they got the black hair. You know, like the Greeks or whatever, like the like the not the first the, the dark skinned Greeks, but like the the people they called saying they was the Greeks. Do they connect with these same people you're showing me at the top? with the dude with the bald head, the Java man? No, he not that Java man is from um over in Asia. Okay, from right. the Java Islands. Okay, all right. So we talking about a whole different. They might have a similar line of royalty, but they come from a different stock. Okay. So imagine that the parents got 12 different kids and each one of the 12 kids got 12 kids and each one of those 12 kids got 12 kids and they all d- branch off in the different parts of the world yeah. and set up camp. This is what happens with us. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. I'm with you. Right. So the vibrational frequency of Earth moves us where we need to be in order to clean up all um human errors that was um accumulated over the six thousand year cycle uh-huh. uh-huh the only way to exit the cycle is to tell the people what's being cleaned up the blood right so they needed a certain amount of blood and they was allowed to shed a certain amount of blood to get it mm. that's, that's, i'm seeing what you're saying go ahead Okay, so now, go to Imitation of Life. Is it in that photo you sent me? It's the girl, it's a movie, uh, uh, it's a movie poster. Okay, all right, I got you right here. Her, right there. You see what this say? She say, I want to be white like I look. Oh, she was looking at the world. Live a white girl's life. You see that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, the name of the movie is Imitation of Life. One of the best movies you'll watch. Gonna have it's a tearjerker. Okay. Now, I need you to go to the picture right before this to see what the girl looked like. The other way. Right there. Now, blow that up. These, this is the characters that's playing the girl that's passing on the right, and that's supposed to be her mama on the left. Right? Uh-huh. So she used to humiliate her mama by telling people her mama was her nanny. Uh-huh. And she wanted to be white so bad um, that she almost missed her mama's funeral, trying uh-huh. to go and dance with the dancing girls on the stage as a Caucasian, right? Now, the million dollar question we about to come to. So Abraham Lincoln so-called emancipated the slaves, right? Uh Uh-huh. And we know that there was generations of rape and molestation um, on those POW camps that they now call slave quarters uh-huh. Uh-huh. and we know that a sizable portion of them looked at like her when they left the plantation and we also know that people that looked at like her had carte blanche to get into the institutions that was blocked from her mother getting into because they assumed that she's from the same ethnic stock a so-called white person. She passed the brown paper bag test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Light, bright, damn near white. Remember? Yeah, right. (laughs) Okay, now, go to Nature Knows No Color line, just the other way, on J.A. Rogers. Nature Knows No Color line. Right there. Now, this is the book I'm referencing now. In this book, he's talking about um, if the being is not a natural being, they can't amalgamate with us. Mm. We can't produce an offspring 
unless there's a certain amount of our genetic compatibility. And so he goes into a record of so-called interracial relationships in the offspring. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he tells you that nature don't recognize black people and white people, what we call the color code of a modern American caste system. Uh-huh. Now, remember, in the and um, Superman the Man, he said that they were, uh, both of them was arguing a point with references and the people that look like us, we couldn't tolerate the people that look like them. And wow. the people that look like them couldn't tolerate the people that look like us. So what is the only balance in the, in the, um, in the scenario? Mutual respect comes from a discussion of a topic from two different angles, from two different competent viewpoints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So nature knows no color line. And uh, I think that's uh, Queen Sophia on the cover, it looked like to me. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like uh, King George III's wife. Right, because yeah. now King George II, King George III was instrumental in the uh, what we call the European onslaught of the Americas. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Once the once they got us to make the Paris Accord, that's when they slid in with the legal maneuvers. Because mm -hmm. the pa Paris Accord ceasefire agreement was to stop the, um, the treaty companies from fighting each other. I mean, the trading companies from fighting each other and work mm -hmm. together. Yeah, the British Indian Company. There was one of right. them. So, when, what they merged together to form the United States of America was something called the Virginia Company and the Northwest Trading Companies. Both was early American slave traders, fur traders, tobacco traders, plantation sugar traders, uh, all that. They was trading all that. Uh -huh. Now, they came over here and mass killed off the buffalo and brought us a bunch of cows. Now, why would they do that? Yeah, go ahead. Heavy. They it's killed heavy. off. They killed off almost all of the elk and almost all of the moose, and they don't even tell y'all that it used to be elephants over here, right? You got to go dig that up on your own. And then they try to make it. In, when you do dig it up, they try to give you the idea that the elephant, the American elephant, which was different from the African and the Asian elephant. They try to give you the impression that they only existed over here some 50, 60,000 years ago and been gone. Yeah. But we had birds over here that was fucking beautiful and huge and they killed them all off because we used to use the feathers for ceremonial purposes and we had learned how to harness the light energy through the crystalline um, style feathers that they had that had a fluorescent glow. Uh huh. Right. So they wanted to try to stop us from using anything that we because we use implements to harness power. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, they looking for one drop of blood mm -hmm. to clean up the genetic defect so they can have a right to a sin. Mm -hmm. The side effect is Brazilianization. Right. Mm -hmm. Now. I sent you a page from a couple pages from Baba on uh, Neutronoids and the uh, Time magazine covers. We're going to just go back to the beginning and we're going to go over them one at a time. All right. There you go. Oh, uh, go back. Oh, uh, yeah. You want to go with Baba documents first? The man from Planet Reese? Okay. Let's pull this one up first. All uh, right. Now, I don't know if we're gonna be. I don't know if we're gonna be here. able to read. Yeah, that's that's gonna be. I okay, can't. go back because it was something I had you. Uh, I was having you pull up earlier. I just seen the other way. Other way. Oh yeah. If you in the building, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Oh yeah. Uh, went too far. Right there. Ah, uh, yeah, let's load up. So in here, you can see the context in which the term Brazilianization is used. 
Uh, oh, yeah. I see where it's highlighted it, but you barely can see it. But you can see it at the top right there, though. It's blurred mm-hmm. out. It's like, it's like uh, because if, if they don't know, they think I made the term up. This is a page in a book. Matter of fact, we can look it up. I mean, shit, look like it's. Oh, let's try something real quick. Let's see if they. This might I might can pull up the uh this might be on the one you were something looking for. Uh so they got it highlighted in this. They're talking about it in this too though. Uh but I'm trying to see if they got it highlighted somewhere. Yeah, it is talking about a Jennifer Lopez movie. Oh yeah. Top Brazilian nation of the world. Mm-hmm. They both still putting out movies. Okay, so oh, oh, no. the okay. reason why we brought up um, the Brazilianization in the Neutronoid is because this is what's, what we have done to clean up the genetic spill that caused us to be trapped in this light lock for 6,000 years. So we got 6,000 years to clean the genetics up by sharing the blood of the royal families of the earth so that these people have a right to move from third dimension to higher dimensions because they was trapped because they couldn't raise the sacred secretion. So it kept them in what's called the perpetual infinity loop. They was always reincarnating on third dimension earth and this is why they have certain quirks to their character. Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, insane and crazy, right? Because they don't have the right to a sin that causes the breakdown in the personality. But when they get that one drop of blood, then you get a Keanu Reeves who's telling this whole story in his, in his career as an actor, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Matrix, John Wick. And John Wick, he actually go to me in Leo. You ain't know that, did you? No. Nah. So <laughs> it's this part two, it's, with, it's with him and Haley Berry. Yeah, I, I seen it, I think I seen it. Right. Remember yes. when they gave him directions how to get there, right? Mm-hmm. They gave him a specific starting place and told him to go east following the dog star. Oh, yeah. See, now I'm about to go back and watch that movie again. You know? And then he said, listen, he said, and go far as you can. And when you can't go no further, that's called the end of the earth. Oh, shit. So he sent them to the end of the earth to meet the high table. When he get into the high table, look at that guy that's playing the high table because he's speaking for the gods. Okay, I got you. All right, now, he's telling John Wick what he has to do um, in order to not get get murdered from the orders of the high table. Uh Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. And then he then he absolve him of his sins and he went to sacrifice that which he loved, which was his, his wife's memory and his wedding ring. Mm-hmm. So he chopped off his wedding finger. Somebody go watch that movie again, man. He's sitting there talking to him, Leo. Now, look when you get a look at the character that's playing the part, right? Uh-huh. Go to YouTube. Betraya appears in Africa. It's the same motherfucker. What? So he came back as Matria because before he left this motherfucker, he had to make a public appearance. Because they got to pass power to Loki. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? The, 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 the uh, stepson of Zeus. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, who is his mama? 
the ice princess, right? Hey, the ice queen, and um, and the uh, the old man was it Zeus took her for his wife and put Thor in position as the heir, but the rightful heir was always Loki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They call Loki a trickster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the real reason they call him a trickster is not because they played because he played tricks on people. Mm -hmm. They call him a trickster because they couldn't trick him. Mm -hmm. He's seen through all their deception. Mm -hmm. So they call him a trickster as a mockery uh -huh. Uh -huh. because they can't trick him. Mm -hmm. He see through their bullshit. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. So now, Inky children and new children and then little children gotta go. Mm -hmm. And new children didn't cause an upset to the balance of the natural order of the earth. So all they gotta do is leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Inky children aren't the cause of the imbalance in the earth. Some of them are earthborn spirits of the earth and they can't leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the ones that's Anunnaki born on Earth, they can go now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And um, Enlil children fucked up the balance. None of the motherfuckers can't stay except for the ones that's Earth born. Mm -hmm. So now, if you look up loyalists, since we got the thing up, uh, loyalists. These was Enlil children of the earthborn that took sides with the people of the earth. You see under the crest right there on the right? Oh, shit. Yeah, buddy, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you just gave me a whole nother connection now. Right. Oh, the shit. loyalist was was in the kids that uh, was born to earthbound women mm -hmm. with ties to the loyalty to their mitochondrial connection to the earth. Mm -hmm. They called the loyalists. What? Right. So now they undercover fighting against their father line to put their mother line back in her proper place. This dude dressed in Scottish uh, attire. So, like, all right, so let me, let me put this together. Because I know that Great Britain was ran by Moors. They, they show us all these white guys. They, they, this King George right here, they're showing us. Try to show him as a white guy, right? But we know that he wasn't. Yeah, King George is about your complexion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, so he was a law. He was a lawless too, huh? Uh, King George. No, King George wasn't. Okay, all right. But these guys here with the red hair and the green eyes, they are uh, the connect. They, they they coming from that Irish side. Those the are the hair. Scots. Yeah, the Scots. So yeah, the Scots with the now the, right now you talking because mm -hmm. the Scots trace back to Scotta, who uh -huh. was the princess of the royal court of Egypt, uh -huh. well, who went to settle her own land, and she took with her her twin sister Scotia. They're not really twins. They oh, just yeah, said they, they were. Oh, uh, shit, man. Look, they talk about that in this book right here. I scammed through that. This book right here. Yep. This book, and it's another book. Oh, man. Okay, so they I set up. I'm read two. this shit again now. Yep. So they set up two spiritual oh, man. practices, one in Ireland, where the Egyptian priests wore snake bands. Yep. Yep. That book right there, talk about it. What you saying right there. Yeah. It was in the British house. They talk about Scotia, all that, leaving the, oh, man. Oh, shit, I'm about to go back and read this book again. I, I, I just scanned through it, but I'm going I'm to go back and really thoroughly read it now that you said that. And about the Right. Yeah, so okay. now, Scotia was a, uh, what they call a red child, a fire child, because she was born with fire red hair and a piebald suntan. Mm -hmm. And her sister Scotta was called Europe's red-haired stepchild. Mm -hmm. 
they give a loose depiction of them in the story of the Bolean sisters. Yeah. Those are the, those, they not, they not Caucasian. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Right. They, those are Scots. Scots are Egyptians with, with light skin from a defect that they got from the Anunnaki lineage that they come from. Mm. A different group of star people. Right. Now, notice that these are Scots who's mostly gingers. Then you have the Irish, which is a combination of genders and brunettes. Uh -huh. So when you when you see in this, you see in the different clans that was mixed in at different times. Right. All of this. Now, when you look at them, look, Caucasoid men, look at the locations in which they coming from. Afghanistan, Pakistan, South India, North Africa, Egypt, uh, Italian. Yep. Okay, all right. British. Okay. Now, we know from Ivan Van Sertima's African presence in early Europe that the island of Crete was a Greek island that was civilized by uh, Egyptian priests. Mm -hmm. And we also know that Latin was penned by Etruscans as they settled Cordoba and Barcelona, or what we call the Spanish Empire. Okay. Now, these Etruscans that wrote and penned Latin were what we call Blackamoors. Right? Mm -hmm. But when you see modern depictions, they paint them as pale skins. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. That's telling us the mirror flip of who behind it if you can recognize the face without paying attention to the color. Uh -huh. Right? So you got to see past the color and look at the facial expressions and the facial features. Then you got to look at the signs and symbols that the picture hold with it. It's that you got to learn to read tarot first. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. So once you realize that if you look up um, Moorish jewelry, you'll see the jewelry that was being worn by the, a lot, by different tribes and they had the picture of uh, the, the, the royal family member that they was loyal to. They would put his pen on their lapel so when they out in public, they knew who they were. Click that where you at. Uh, what which one you want me to go on? Oh, uh, the black and blue. It don't matter. There now. See that? Click that. Blow that up. Let people see what that is. All right, hold on. Let me save it now. Oh yeah, baby! If you're new to the channel, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We in the building with the brother, legendary Rod Haynes, man. You got to get in the building with us. So now this yeah. is getting back to Yakub and getting back to the Jews. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is where we going with this now. We going back to Yakub and Yakub is taking us to the Jews. Where the damn Jew is, bro? So I can blow it up. Oh, yeah. Suck it, suck it now. Now, this is how they got to be called Jews. Go so the, the reference now is uh, you can go to YouTube, pull up Dr. John Henry Clark. And the title of the lecture is What Exactly is a Jew? Right here, who and what is a Jew? No, the first one. All right, hold on, hold on, go back. What exactly are we talking? The 
person right here. The world is at a tipping point as historical events of biblical proportion. What exactly are we talking about? Because our Turn it up a little bit, Adam. That's the last they got it to go, man. And we cannot separate folklore from fact. Oh, let's see. Too many times. Yeah, it's the last I can get it right there. Go back to the other one, because they're the same. The other one was louder, though, so they can hear it better. That, that second one. How is it that? Uh, what second one? The you just clicked kids. off. You just clicked out of it. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. I'm like you talking about the. Uh, oh, look, look at that. All uh, right. It's this one right here. Let's go. This one right here. See where his hands up? What exactly? Yeah. I'm talking about because our mind is so dazzled I mean. with folklore, and we cannot separate folklore from fact. Too many times we swear by folklore, not knowing that it has nothing to do with fact. Who exactly is a Jew? There was no word called Jew in the ancient world. The word Jew did not come out of Africa. It did not come out of Western Asia. It is a European word. There are people of the Hebrew faith all over the world. There are black Hebrew, there are brown Hebrew, there are yellow Hebrew. How is it that a bunch of Europeans called Jews dominate the word Jew to the extent of making you think that the very same Hebrew is exclusive to them, leaving out all other people. That's it. We need to come. Now, he, as he go through this video, he make mention of the term Jew referring to the jewels. Uh -huh. And the jewels that you just pulled up that you the Jews that you wore show everybody which Tudor family of Etruscans you were loyal to. Mm. And if you had the right lapel pin, it was a free pass to go wherever you wanted. Where other people couldn't go certain places. Uh -huh. Right, this was under the, the their rule. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. So, if you put pull up Moorish statuary in Europe, in the um, Google, they're going to show you what was going on in Europe. Hey, spell that last word, statuary. Yep, S T A T U A R U T A R. Why? Oh, yeah, okay, all right. That's some crazy shit right here, ain't it? Pull that up. That picture right there? Yep. I'm going to blow it on up, man. They got some stop signs. How long let me say? It's, it's, some, right it's some more, too, but we're we, we going we gonna to deal with this one right here. All right, let's get it. Let me, uh, let me blow it up for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Let me blow it up. There we go. I'm getting a lot of stuff to add to the majesties of America, baby. All right, I got some niggas chained up. What they're trying to break out. Right. Now, this is the, um, I'm not sure where this particular statuary yet or how old it is. But this is showing you who the slave traders were. Because when the Moors went into Europe, they took slaves from Africa with them. But they was also dark, like pull up tip or tip. Tip, tip or tip is what we call a blackamoor proper. He is the blackamoor in every sense of the word, and he was the biggest slave trader we know of. Hey, spell his name. T I P P E R space T I B B. Tip or tip. I ain't never heard of it, dude. Yes, you have. Bobby talk about him. See him over there at the top to the left, the first picture. That's him right there. That's him. And that's him. Oh yeah. I'm I'm, I'm gonna man, I'm gonna do all the research like you can find on this guy now. He was the biggest slave trader in the world, you said, right? Right. Go to Wikipedia and see what they say about him. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is go to the top and switch uh, over to uh, all, and it'll take him straight to the... Uh, there you go. Yeah, he's a slave trader. Explore. Oh, man, I'm going to get his ass now. Oh, hey, can you read that, uh, Elder? Because I can't see it. It says, uh, real name, Hogmad Ibn Muhammad Ibn Doom Ah Ibn. I ain't going to say this whole damn name. Yeah, we it, know it's was, uh, it. Yeah, he was an Afro Ottoman, uh, Irish, and say, say, slave trader, explorer, governor, and plantation owner. What the fuck? Did they say Ottoman? Yeah. And that, didn't I tell you they came in through the Ottoman Empire as Byzantine kings, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He worked for success of the student to a student. And so this dude was a big time. He had got a lot of money. He's super right rich. Yeah, he was obscenely rich. He didn't only he didn't only trade slaves though. He also um sold ivory from yeah, elephants. He's black too. That nigga crispy black. Crispy black. God, man. He a these are, these hey, are, so he, these are the, black, these the dirty wars we talk about. Yeah, okay, okay, I just want to ask you that. He a dirty more. Yeah. Look at his actions. His actions speaking for themselves. He hiding his hand. He got that stick right there, the sword. Okay, he, no, he ain't hiding his hand. I'm, I'm thinking that's that white piece of his hand. Yeah, I can just look at him and tell he looked like he's the guy that was just all about getting some money. <laughs> tell him. Right. So when we talk about the slave trades, they really not slave trades. Mm -hmm. What they really was was prisoners of war uh -huh. that were ransomed. Keep talking. I'm going to give me a drink. Right. But in the process of going through the warfare, we had to end up fighting wars and also cleaning up the program from what they was doing. What it do's nephew? <clears throat> so the the this is how Indian kids operate on the earth by putting other people in bondage and putting them in servitude um, against their will. Um, by selling them into slavery. It's a game they play called the game of the gods. The people are the pawns on their, on their 5D chessboard. <coughs> oh, shoot. Throat getting dry.
So what we're looking at here is what you call a natural born sellout. He sold us all out because he sold us. You can't get no more sellout than that, than sell to people um, that look like you. But he, they ain't the same people. He was aware of that, but many of us looking back in the history books aren't aware that they had people like this that was subjugating people like us. They didn't have none of our interests at heart. They wasn't doing anything to benefit us. Everything was for a selfish agenda. And they still look at other humans as pets. That's their standard psychology is to see all other humans just not from their family clans as pets. Because that's how they looked at what's called Lulu Amalu as the pets of Enki. So Enlil want all of the humans to be his pets and get the same loyalty that Enki and Inanna got. Right? But he don't deserve it. He the one, remember, when you're reading the Sumerian tablets and it say that Enlil decided to flood out the humans, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in the Bible, it's Yahweh deciding to flood out the humans, right? Mm -hmm. So Yahweh is Enlil because Enlil was the one trying to destroy the humans. Mm -hmm. Why all of a sudden he going to turn into the good guy and not be trying to destroy all of the humans? Mm -hmm. Right? And mm -hmm. Enki, Poseidon, decided he wasn't with the bullshit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They was doing good until Enlil brought his jealous ass down here and started some shit. And he couldn't get along with his daddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, right? and he wanted, and he wanted uh, Enki to do the, he wanted Enki to do the flood. He wanted Enki to bust the dams so he could flood the uh, place. He, he didn't want right. to, it, it was his idea. He wanted to, he wanted to, uh, he, he suggested it and he wanted it done. He wanted it done, but he wanted Enki to do it so they can blame him. For the flood, right? Because this how the, that's how the Anunnaki that's one of their strategies. So the young elder go out and build a pyramid in the backyard, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm in the house before anybody know it. I put my name as the builder, and when you go somewhere, everybody comes see it and say, "All oh, right, built the shit out that pyramid, boy. You see that pyramid he built?" Mm -hmm. And I'd be over there like, "Yeah, give me adulation, give me the love." Mm -hmm. That's that jealous God shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't right. put so it before me. Right. So they try to switch the names. That's called, uh, they got several names, beheading the God or defacing the God. Mm -hmm. Remember, they beheaded Medusa. Mm -hmm. Medusa means uh, high priestess of the doulas. She run the doulas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where was she at? She was in Greece. Who settled Greece? Egyptian priests, right? Who overthrew Greece? Etruscan Moors called themselves Rome, right? So Rome rose to power. All roads lead back to Rome in the Rome, Holy Roman Empire, or the unholy Roman Empire is Enlil's devices. Mm -hmm. It's reflected in the papal bulls that bind you by contracts that you don't know exist. Mm -hmm. By listing you as a straw man and making you believe that you are the straw man on the paper instead of mm -hmm. knowing that the straw man is just the name your account is in. Mm -hmm. But they won't never let you access the account. <laughs> Anytime you attempt to become a success in accessing the account, they want to try to find some reason to murder you or lock you up. Mm -hmm. If you got a right to kick them out the land, they just flat out murder you or lock you up. They trump up a case on you. Mm -hmm. Right? So now let's go over these Time Magazine covers one at a time where I can tell you what they're talking about. Because they're always telling us in plain sight what's going on. Now we know Planet of the Apes, right? Now you see this all mixed up, mm -hmm. half in Asian, half Caucasian, and 100% cool, while Eurasians are the new face of Asia. 
The reason this is on public display is to prove that the Asians gave some of the golden dragon line, royal blood, to clean up the genetic spill. It's right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right there. <coughs> Read it again. All mixed up, right? Uh-huh. And it say half Asian, half Caucasian, and 100% cool. Why Eurasians are the new face of Asia. Nobody ain't telling y'all how they got to be that light to begin with. When they started off looking like us. Mm -hmm. It's the genetic cleanup. That's why in Asia, they still eat baby soup. Yeah, that's right. You know, they still eat stuff that we have evolved beyond in this hemisphere. Right, because they're still carrying some of the animalistic traits of a lesser evolved species of hominid. Go to the next one. Oh, yeah. Blow it up. Oh, yeah. I need to see the little writing under the how we became human part. Yeah, it's going to be a little, uh, it's going to be probably difficult right there because it's just a champ. Oh, no, that's good. There you go. See what it say? Chimps and humans mm-hmm. share almost 99% of their DNA. New discoveries reveal how we can be alike and yet so different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, we laughed at it because we not reading the Sumerian tablets. The yeah. Sumerian tablet said that they took a species of primate that was already from Earth. Yeah. And they mixed the DNA of the Anunnaki. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was to create Homo sapien sapien. Uh-huh. Homo sapien sapien um, look drastically different than Homo erectus. Uh-huh. What's the main difference? Pull them up. I got pictures pull of it. I got pictures of it in that in this folder right here. Yeah, pull it up. All right, let's see. Uh I got pictures of it in this folder. Oh yeah. If I don't got a minute photo, I got a photo I can pull up and you know, I have them. Just give me a second. All right, go right here. Go to the new folder. It's going to be right up in this folder. All right, Homo erectus, Homo sapien. All right, so, okay, this is the first. This is Homo uh, genus right here. And then we can go to the next. All right, you can start with that one or you can start with this one. This is the Homo erectus right here. Mm-hmm. The Homo sapien. Do you see the difference in them? Yeah, yeah. It's, the difference it's, is primarily what? What you call uh, cranial facial um, features. Yeah, yeah. Right? But these people was more highly evolved than you could possibly imagine. The Homo erectus and the Homo sapien. Uh, this Homo erectus right here. This Homo sapien. Now all of these are melanated beings because there's no Europeans yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The first, the first mention in the history of uh, Earth of a European was the Egyptians writing about the Tamahu. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and they said that when Isis um, sent her scientists to see what this was, they had all of the guardian spirits congregating in Europe. Uh-huh. This is why Romulus and Remo suckled from the wolf. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The she wolf was a guardian spirit, and if it was a bad enough crisis, she can physically incarnate 
and she can take care of a harsh condition. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was babies starving in mass that drew the energy that made them suckle Romulus and Remos. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Right? Now, this is a metaphor for uh, the women that's the real guardian angels, Barashango reference. Mm -hmm. The women who was the real guardian angels that was leaving posts around the world to meet the call of suffering children in the Caucasus Mount. So when they brought one to Isis, Queen of Heaven and Earth, and she seen it, she didn't know what the fuck they was. Hmm. So she said, what manner of beast is this? <laughs> right? Yeah. And so she ordered the scientists of the day um, to go do genetic testing and find out exactly what species of creature this was because she didn't know if it was primate, um, cadent, or human. Mm -hmm. So once they shaved him down and cleaned him up, then you have what you call a Nordic appearing person. Mm -hmm. Pull up a Nordic. I think I got pictures of him in his photo on that photo. Uh, it don't matter where you pull it up from, as long as I can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think I got These visuals go a long way. Yeah, do it do. Uh I think she a Nordic. Uh this chick right here. Yeah, but she's a child, so you can't see the full yeah, picture. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. use the full ride because this is the, the general facial characteristics of the Nordics. Yeah. The long face European with the long, longer head. This is why these people called fluorides was brought in by Ashtar Command to help clean up the genetics by using star seeds of a developed society to uh, mix in with them. This is why all of the grades been doing genetic testing heavy for the last 75 years. Mm -hmm. It's all tied together. <clears throat> these are our huns these was the ones that was fighting the etruscans in the wars that they brought over here as slaves and they became five dollar indians mixed with mongols <laughs> so it was huns that looked like this and mongols that was the servants of the um of the moorish empire that ruled spain because that's who they fought wars with under the Rome, Holy Roman Empire. Uh-huh. I'm trying to find a lot this way. Just Google one. Oh, yeah, you were a little bit faster. I know I got it in this uh, pictures of them because I, I, I knew that you was going to talk on it. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, baby. <clears throat> No, the images. Long post, long post. <coughs> Come on. Come on. Give me a humble bunch of food. Hold on, type of thing like this. <coughs> All right. She a Nordic, but I'm trying to find somebody. She is actually real Nordic. That chick right there, but I'm trying to find somebody that's grown. She or Nordic. Uh, how are all these people Nordic? Let's see. I had a black dude. <laughs> all right, so I'm trying to find the best picture I can find of some Nordics. Uh, let's see. Man, give me that good. I know all look, these up, look it up as Norse, N O R S E. N O R S E. Ah, uh, yeah, it might work. 
The first picture. Yeah, it's the, the, he, he one of them. So. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> All right, let me save it and roll it up for you. Oh, yeah. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We just say it then. Let's get it going. Hey, oh, yeah. And we got about uh 20 minutes, more minutes, and I'm about to get off. Yeah, my phone gonna last about that long, too. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so look, you see how they dress, right? Yeah. And you see how they generally look. The facial cranial structure, the longer face. Uh-huh. Right? So... <clears throat> they needed the, the all of this is mixing other peoples to give drop of blood to the hybrid uh-huh. that was created in the laboratory by Enlil's um, military to expedite gold shipment. Right? Uh-huh. So when you're looking at the genome and you're looking at the genetic structure and you're studying what the eugenics is talking about, then you start to understand they was using reverse psychology on the collective unconscious in order to draw people together that would otherwise, in their natural habitat, never cross paths. What? Yeah, right? Right there. Go ahead. So um, once they cross paths, now they make it a taboo. If you want us to make some uh, make a move in a direction, you tell us not to do it. We can't. We do not allowed to do that. We gods uh-huh. just to defy the mortal concept of what we can't do. We gonna do exactly what the fuck you said I can't do. We gonna share this one drop of motherfucking blood, <laughs> right? Because yeah. Enlil don't want you to share the drop of blood because if they can't ascend, we all got to go start over again. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And then if we had another 100 year contract under Enlil rule. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, the um, they already said Nibiru, what they call our second binary star, is invisible orbit. Now, then they call in the red dust cloud. They call in the red dust cloud a Sahara sandstorm. Uh, uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. But the history books tell us that every 3,600 years, when the Death Star returns, the sky turns red. Uh-huh. And when the sky turns red, the elders return on the Vamanus or the craft or the mirror or the ship, Uh right? The sky boat, Uh the sky serpent, right? So they coming back from the skies. And Uh remember we went over the war in heaven, landed on earth and we got caught up in somebody else's shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> right. So now you when you start seeing who, who did the Nordics become? The Vikings. Right. Mm-hmm. Because when they got their drop of blood, they was given the right to rule on the seas as the queen gives mm-hmm. them the order. When you take the term Viking, it's short for vicarious kings mm-hmm. of the high seas. Mm-hmm. By a king. That's good. Nice Jew. I like that. Right. Now, when they came over here and they aided in the escape of Scotta, who became Mamon Brigitte mm-hmm. in the Vadoon, mm-hmm. and Scotia who moved north to set up something called Nova Scotia or New Scotia, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if it's New Scotia, where in the fuck is the old Scotia? Right. Right? It's Scotland. It's Scotland. 
And the Scotland of the Americas is the mountains, the Appalachians. <clears throat> it's the same mountain region that was split. Hey, right? That's side effects of the war. And they got something to do with the island that the uh, Knights of Templar buried their gold on, the Scottish uh, Knights of Templar? Uh, they did that on Puerto Rico. Okay, all right. I'm talking about like no, nah, I'm talking about with uh with Hernandez when they came over to Central America when he came over to Central America, and then yeah, he, that was Puerto Rico. Okay, that's the rich. Yeah, 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 that's right. They did have it on Puerto Rico, but then they moved it to uh the other island like Nova Scotia Island that you're talking about. Nova Scotia is north. It's in northern Canada. Yeah, by Canada. Yeah, it's by Canada. Yeah. <clears throat> now. <clears throat> When the Norsemen came over here, they came with horses on their ships. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And when they came, they was given the right to traverse the land for rescuing the heirs to the kingdom of the earth. Mm -hmm. So they was allowed to traverse the land by horseback as nomads. Mm -hmm. Right, so they became the great wind riders um, across the land. In modern times, we call them bikers and they ride motorcycles and you call them hell's angels. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, we get somewhere, go ahead. <clears throat> so you mm -hmm. update the horse and you put a motorcycle there. Uh -huh. And you see the same people doing the same thing they was given permission to do on the land that try to keep their business to themselves. Because uh -huh. that's the rules. Don't let your family business get in my family business. Uh -huh. Right? So they code of ethics tell them to keep the civilians out of our business. Uh -huh. So they stayed to themselves until they got infiltrated by the government. Why did the government infiltrate them? They wasn't doing nothing but riding bikes and providing a living for their families in their own little lane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the government infiltrated them because they couldn't get them to pay taxes. The one percent. Yeah, they wouldn't pay taxes. They not they not part of the system. They nomads on the land. Big Mama gave the right because they brought Momo Brigitte and her sister Scotia of Nova Scotia to settle in the lands and to seek refuge among the righteous until the close of the age. Mm -hmm. So that they can restore the balance to the earth as the matriarchy is returned. So then you start wondering why <clears throat> you have the bikers and the skinheads alliances with vice lords and crips and bloods and shit. Mm -hmm. The elders in the biker community know the code they was given when they came to the land on horseback. And they adhere to the code until the government overstepped their boundaries and went into the arena. This is how the Hell's Angels, now you see the uh, the great motorcycle rides, but they all start joining forces and start fighting each other because they found out that they was being set up by the government's COINTELPRO so that they would never be able to properly defend the land from rogue government. Mm. And these are the people <clears throat> called conquistadors Spanish Moors, 32 degree Scottish Rite Lodge, allegiance between the French and the English in order to overthrow the organics, the, the ones that was already here. So we had to unravel the mystery. So we need to know who Yakub's grafted double was and what happened to him. Mm -hmm. So you see, in the process of Brazilianization, everybody came to get a drop of blood. When they blocked pale institutions with pale faces, 
we was able to call for aid and assistance to overrun a system with pale faces that was friendly. Mm. And this is how you get rid of the power of racism by putting people that don't tolerate it that look just like the people perpetuating it. Mm. So now you see if somebody call you a, a, the N word, <clears throat> Somebody that don't look like you going to stick up for you faster than somebody that look like you. Right? Because it's, it's, part, it's part of a spiritual pact for them to come to the great melding pot. Now, that's one of the pictures I sent you. If you go to that folder, we can show the people well, Wikipedia simply say a great melding pot of America is. <clears throat> it should be one of them right there. That's one, That's one, one drop. What's the next one? Can you see it? The melting pot is a monocultural metaphor for the heterogeneous society becoming more homogenous. <coughs> Excuse me. That crunch. <coughs> right? It said the different elements melting together with a with a common culture um an alternative being a homogenous society becoming more heterogeneous through the influx of foreign elements with different cultural backgrounds possessing the potential to create this harmony <clears throat> within the previous culture it can also create a harmonious, hybridized society. You see these words, right? Yeah, they use some, some creepy shit right here. Go ahead. N known as cultural amalgamation. Historically, it is often used to describe the cultural integrity of immigrants to the United States. A related concept has been defined as cultural additivity. So now they got all of these different terms. <clears throat> Look at what they're saying. The melting pot is a monocultural metaphor. And when they say monocultural, monocultural meaning being of one culture. Yeah. But it's only metaphorically. You see where it's a heterogeneous society yeah. becoming more homogenous? Heterogeneous is, I mean, that's straightforward heterosexual or patriarchal um, focus of a society. Mm -hmm. They telling you here <clears throat> that the uh, homogenous society with the different elements make them melt together with a common culture. Mm -hmm. But the heterogeneous, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't allot for that. They say it's becoming more heterogeneous through the influx of foreign elements with different cultural backgrounds, possessing the potential to create this harmony. You see it? Mm -hmm. So what that's saying is the heterogeneous patriarchal culture is, is more likely to produce a disharmony. What happens when disharmony created? You have something called an unrest. And this is talking about the cultural melding of a people. How do you do it? This is the how-to philosophy behind bringing different groups of people together in order to merge the communities of the world into one common denominator through one drop of blood. Mm. <clears throat> so this so, part of the new world order, right? So this part of the new world order. Oh, they, they new world order, right? It's going to always be a new world order. It's just who's going to run the show. The, the, the rightful heir is going to run the show or we're going to let the imposters run the show. And as long as the imposters run the show, we subjugate it 
serb servient in position, rank, and power. As soon as we decide we don't want them to run the show no more, they got to go. Mm. But most of us is too confused about our position in the whole scheme until we're scared to make a move. So they all froze in place like toy soldiers. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So now, if you go to, um, I want to show you something too. This is going to be good, uh, Elder. If you go to um, Google and you pull up Jewish Defense League and you look at their logo. <laughs> it's a funny middle, it's a funny circle, man. Still not See black that? power shit, yeah. Why is it there? <clears throat> because hey, these people right here, is I believe the people, some man, I don't know, but it, I, like I'm kind of like sleepy right now. But I, I, I think that. Uh, it was one group of white people that was claiming that they was Jews and they were trying to help us. The Jewish Defense League is not the people you see. You never see any of them. Okay, go ahead. The Jewish Defense League is a paramilitary top secret, secret society organization to protect the Jacobins. Hmm. Right? So they were overseeing the amalgamation plot in order to ensure that Yaku's graft the devil got their one drop of blood back in order to revert them back on a genetic prosperous um, upward climb. Mm. So the Jewish Defense League, they look like me and you. Yeah. But they put these people you see out there they from the Anti-Defamation League, which is the ones that's out front taking all of the heat. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Somebody had to enforce that shit and make sure that the one drop of blood was equitably distributed so they kept people in POW camps, raping them and forcing that one drop of blood throughout the lineage until they was living an imitation of life and escaped into the community at large and amalgamated with the ones that they thought had the power, never knowing that they was running away from the powerful ones. Mm -hmm. But in the process, the genetic spill proves itself when all of the um, media show you the improvement in the psychological development of the collective of those people that came on the Ellis Island um, transports. Mm -hmm. They not the same people that they were. Physiologically, psychologically, they got their one drop of blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, shit, Everybody fucking cousins now. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, if you look up Genghis Khan, shit, 60% of the world related to this motherfucker. What? Yeah. Because he had, they had, the, that's, they royal gold dragon blood in uh, Anu. The red dragon blood is Dinana. The black dragon blood is Enlil, and the green dragon blood is Zinki. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the rainbow uh, dragon is Tahuti. Mm -hmm. And Tahuti is the heir apparent to the throne for the father line and the mother line. Okay. Red and blue. Right? So mm -hmm. he was born. And he was kept secret in order for him to be able to develop into a psychologically developed adult that can prove he's not an imbecile in law to reclaim the kingdom of the earth on behalf of the sisters to raise the matriarchy. Because when it's all said and done, ain't no man God. Mm -hmm. God is a woman. 
Big Mama, Prime Creator. We in her uterus. If we in her uterus, how the hell can man, uh, God be a man? Right. Because <laughs> everywhere the creation takes place, whether it's the darkness of the mind or the darkness of the womb, it got to be in triple darkness in order to manifest as the first spark of light. Uh -huh, that's right. Right? So when you remember we say uh, what Pops told us, we're not being punished for our sins. We're being punished by our sins. Yeah. The, the term sin is a God. That's an inner sin. Yeah, right. An inner sin's dirt is what's punishing us. He is under the rule of Enlil, his right hand motherfucking man. Wow. So right. when we sinning, we following something called sin rights. The sin rights is when you surrender your sovereign capacity in order to make somebody superior to you because you don't know your own power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? You're supposed to take your power back and that's how you conquer sin's power to rule you. Mm -hmm. Ninner sin. Because mm -hmm. he, he pulls on your lower nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your ego self. Mm -hmm. Because he is the one who's crafting the psychological matrix for the collective egregore. Mm -hmm. Mental creation of a mastermind. The collective of us all. Right? Mm -hmm. Coming together to produce one common mind. This one common mind being influenced by the one that know how to influence the most people. And the way that you influence the most people is you got to tell the most truth. So they made everything be a lie. Mm -hmm. And now you got to flip the lie inside out in order to find the truth. And then when you do that, you put them on blast and then you take your power back and now they at your mercy, if you got any. Because you're in the position to write, you don't need mercy. Mm -hmm. You can be as ruthless as you need to be in order to do what's right. <clears throat> without consequence, because you're doing what's right. But when you know in your heart of hearts you're on some bullshit, judge not that she may not be judged, but for by the same measure by which you judge, also by that same measure, should you be judged. Mm -hmm. Can't be looking down on other motherfuckers that fall like you ain't never fell before. <clears throat> grown man ain't supposed to pull dirt on another grown man while he's struggling, but they doing it. This is all to exercise, you can get these Jewish Defense League motherfuckers out of my face because they my temperature started. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Hey, uh, hey, but you ready to get off, man? But but uh, I want to. We got about five more minutes. You want to take some questions uh, and answers? Yeah, let's see. If we got some questions. Uh, I'd be glad to answer a couple questions before we go. Uh, okay, all right. So the first question is. They wanted to ask you, uh, is what is your uh, person something they've been trying to get me to ask you this question for about two, three weeks, really. Uh, but uh, so I said I was going to ask them next time I got you on. They said that, uh, what is your no feel about Anu being the most high? That's what they said. They, that's what they want to ask. Listen, Anu, <clears throat> Anu didn't do no dirt on earth. Mm -hmm. Anu came on the stateside visit to try to settle a squabble between his sons. And when he got here, the war had broke out and they got trapped. And new taking the side of the earthborn from the very beginning. When you read in um, Zechariah Stinchin's Confessions of Enki, he telling you how Anu was telling Enlil Punk ass about mitochondria's right to rule earth. And the argument broke out because the sister, Isis, parthogenically made a male child without asking none of the men because they said she couldn't do it. She went to Big Mama for permission. This is what they talk about when they saying that Osiris lost his phallus and that she used magic that Tahuti gave her 
in order to manifest a male child without um, the aid of a man, a immaculate conception, mm -hmm. right? So Anu sign off on anything that a mitochondrial earth um, ruler needs to sustain a mitochondrial planet because he got a great deal of love for his mother and he pushed that agenda. His son, just an asshole. Enlil, mm -hmm. just an asshole. He want to be the, he want to micromanage everybody and everything, what they call mass surveillance of everything every individual do because he's paranoid. So if he's running government, he want to micromanage as much as he can by doing what you're doing at all times through computer uh, um, surveillance systems. Mm -hmm. This is the shit we was fighting against. Right? And they wanted to uh, fix it where it was only two classes of people. The mm -hmm. uber rich and the uber poor. Mm -hmm. or super rich and super poor. Mm -hmm. And the poor people was going to be the ones doing all of the labor. And the rich people was going to reap all of the reward. Well, we didn't think that shit was fair. And New agreed with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So him being the most high, it don't bother me because I don't care. I don't worship none of the motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to give respect where respect is due. Yeah. He the most loved of the guys for a reason. Mm -hmm. Right? So when we talking about um, in uh, Vadun, we talking about Obatula and Oladumare. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the one who authorized the mi mission to begin with as long as they didn't disrupt the balance of the nature of the planet. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't to end Lil Cain and upset the balance of the nature of the planet that we end up in the condition we are now, trying to rediscover our way back out of this shit. Hey, one more question, man, because then I got to get up out of here because I'm supposed to get out at 10.30. Uh, mm -hmm. this is, what is your take on the flat earth theory? Look, I believe people see the flat earth, especially in meditation, when they see what's called the wave pattern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the flat earth I didn't see the earth from outer space in astral travel it's, it's a torsion field it's a hollow earth <laughs> it's, <been over> <laughs> it's a hollow earth because it's a torsion field the opening is to facilitate the cycling of the energy between the two polarities. The problem was the polarities was flipped. So some people can't see the, uh, the torsion field shape. It's more like an apple than it is like a ball. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. Right? But they can't see it because their psyche can see the wave pattern of tomorrow being created, which gives the infinite plane dimensions of creation. So you look in at two worlds at the same time, the wave and the particle. Mm -hmm. When you see it as the particle, it's going to turn into a torsion field. But you can't see it until you open up your mind and stop judging everything and just see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Learn the definitions and you can't be deceived. Because if you know what everything means, your mind automatically is going to train itself to always give you the truthful definition of what you're seeing versus what somebody's telling you. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they can tell you a bar face lie, but if the truth in it, you can extract it and use it. And most successful lies contain elements of truth. That's facts. That's a fact. Right. So when you get past the deception part, you take that element of truth and you extract it out of the lies. 
That's called cracking codes. Mm. Because all of the letters are alchemically made. Ain't nobody just making their own letters to write a letter to their cousin. They're using the standard letters of the society they're in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they in China, they write in Chinese. If they in Japan, they write in Japanese. In India, they write in Sanskrit. In Italy, they write in Italian. In Russia, they write in Russian. Well, who, who gave us all these letters? Yeah. Who's the author of the alphabet of these letters? The morphology of them tell you where they come from. They come from pictographic writings, mm -hmm. which is the writing on the wall. And they told you that it was going to be one that could read the writing on the wall, which is the medunet, the writing of God, read with the fingers of God, meaning by the pencil that he holds in his hand with his fingers. Mm -hmm. Right? And the thought was the cause of it all, and the thought is the word. And the word was thought. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the word thought is thought. And thought is God. Mm -hmm. After he replaced those Anunnaki's that was warring on the 50th seat of the Galactic Council, he be seated on the God seat of the, uh, of the Earth dimension or the Earth domain. That means from the sun to Pluto is his area of uh, jurisdiction. And anything come in there, they got to answer for that shit. They had to make a, a Black Council had to make a um, an agreement amicable to all parties. Mm -hmm. Right? It's called diplomacy. And the, the agreement was every 3,600 years, they give us updated technology and we get them to go. Mm -hmm. Just stay the fuck off Earth. That sounds good to me. That's it. That's all we want them to do. Stay the fuck off Earth. Stop turning our kids against each other. Right? Yeah. Stop making the blood games, the blood rituals, a rites of passage in our community to keep our people subjugated. Let's stop that shit. Right? Hey, I got one more question and we got to get up out of here, man. And you ain't got to go long on it. I just want you to pass this, say like two or three sentences on it. What's your take on the 31 tri uh, million tons that just popped up in Uganda? Uh, do you think that's the ancestors um, putting us you back? About the gold? Yeah, the gold in the Uganda. The they got to give a, they got to give a public accounting of the gold so that when the Anunnaki give us the new technologies, we can give them the goal. We know that it, that we had enough. We met the quota, but they don't got to tell you that's what it's for. Yeah, right. But it still got to be out there for you to put the pieces to the puzzle together. Mm -hmm. Nibiru is income. They give an accounting of massive amounts of gold and gold deposits around the world and other minerals, right? And at the close of the age, we have to um, trade the gold for technology. In this case, we're going to be having a lot more organic healing, and we be getting rid of all like GMOs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, so uh, we better get ready to get up out of here, man. Uh, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. We're going to... Hey, we might have to get you back on just for a question and answer class because it's like people that send me so many questions. Hey, ask the brother about Hey, ask the brother about this. Ask him this. Ask him this. Uh, so we're going to probably get you back on just for uh, people that can ask you these uh, questions they want to ask. Uh, but we want to thank you for coming on, man, because uh, it's been a long day. Uh, but we're going to definitely be back on. We're going to definitely do this again. Oh, yeah. If we probably get tomorrow by 9 30. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can do it tomorrow. We can do it because you know I'm going out live all day. So I'm gonna be back. But today, uh, I've been up since like five o'clock and I ain't been to sleep since. But uh mm -hmm. I'm toughing it out. But uh we can be on tomorrow and do this a question and answer, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do. But like, like yeah. the list of questions I got to answer you. We still uh, gotta do a part three to this because we oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Finish it, we got most of the that's right. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get off. We'll come back tomorrow then at, at the same time. So, hey, right. hey, pe- hey uh, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for coming out to share with us. Be sure to hit that like. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit the bell. If you don't receive a notification from us every day, come back and check because we put some out every day for your ass. All right, so uh, Islam, peace, hotel. Love, I should divine love throughout the violence universe to all, all. All right, thank you, brother. Love, we, I mean, my name, brother. Hey, brother Rob, we love you, man. Uh, so, uh, we, we thank you, man, for coming and sharing with the family and giving us more and more, more, more science. We out of this thing, man. Why do? All right, why do? Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. We are out this thing, people.